When you first got your pro deck, how involved were you with the artwork? Well, my first pro deck was was kind of an accident. It wasn't it wasn't the Iron Cross thing that people associate me with. It was just really this picture of a hawk with lightning bolts on his claw. And the reason that came up is because I mean, I was 14. I had a friend in school that was good at drawing. Yeah. I remember Sam Liu and he handed me some drawings of hawks like, hey, I drew these, you know, I know you're getting a skateboard. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And so I handed them to Pal saying, hey, my friend drew these. And they thought that that was me saying, this is what I want. And so they, they took it literally and just drew a hawk. I wasn't gonna complain, I was super <laughs> excited. Yeah, yeah. And then that didn't sell at all. And uh, I mean, I don't know if it was only because the graphics also, I didn't have much reputation anyway. Right. And then they said, look, we need something bolder. We gotta go, you know, more along the lines of the skull stuff that we do. And they just, they sent me what became my graphic for 10 years. Yeah, I need that first board. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I need to track, watch, track one of those down. Mine, uh, actually my first one got destroyed in a house fire. Wow. Um, and uh, I had to go buy one on eBay. It's a humbling moment when yeah, you have to sure. go buy your own skateboard for thousands of dollars. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big deal. Yeah. You've had a video game since 1999, and uh, now you spawn like what 16 titles? Oh yeah, maybe I don't. I I forgot. I kind of lost track. I mean, there's so many different consoles and alterations of the title that we did, so it's hard to it's hard to keep track of it. So, how involved were you in the uh, in the development and the creation? Oh, very. I mean, from from the get go, when I found out that I was going to be able to do a game. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to, to do it as much as I could to get involved in it. I just wanted it to be authentic and I wanted it to be I wanted it to be something skaters would be proud of. You know, skaters would be hyped to play, maybe even go buy a PlayStation because they heard about it. Mm -hmm. That was my go ultimate goal with it. It wasn't that I was going to go gangbusters and break into the video game market and get to do sequels. It was more like I'm going to make a game that skaters are going to be proud of. But uh, it was a blast. I loved it. So people in a lot of fields, not just skating, have had to deal with the term sellout. Right. Oh, yeah. And, you know, once they've had some success. So how have you dealt with that? Being, you know, being being um, a champion of sorts, that's amazing. I love, you know, I'm, very, I'm really proud and, and I work my ass off to, you know, try to outdo myself every time in those competitions. I think that the whole issue about being called a sellout, I had to deal with that pretty early on just because I was the first one to ever go out and do outside sponsorships, endorsements and things, you know. I mean, as soon as I did a video game, people were like, pfft. That's it, you sold out. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, when I was 14 years old, I had a skateboard with my name on it. If someone had came up to me when I was 14 and said, hey, you wanna make a video game? Said, yes, yeah. sign me up. Yeah. Hey, you wanna do be in a McDonald's commercial? Yes, I ate there today. Like, I'm serious, you know what I mean? And it, we never had those opportunities. And so, I don't know, I just learned that people call you sell out when your stuff finally sells, when people are finally interested in it. Um, you know, I guess to me, the definition of sellout is when you're doing stuff and it's just, it's not genuine, it's not what you believe. You're just rehearsed lines and you don't even care about the product or the, or the message. Um, I loved all the stuff I did. I really did. People should take a page out of your book where it's like, you know what, I'm actually going to take what I love and make a living out of it. That's not really selling out. That's called being successful and being right. a pioneer. But I definitely took the heat too, you know? I mean, I, I got my share of haters and my share of comments and whatever. And, and uh, but I learned to pass that off early on in my life when I was just a scrawny kid. People said I cheated because I ollied into my errors. I was like, yeah, that's how you get height. You ollie into your errors and then you grab it later. You know, but people were just like, he's just cheating, you can grab it anyway. Like, exactly, you can grab it anyway. That's it's right, sick. that's right. <laughs> I love this. Does running the Tony Hawk empire give you the same satisfaction as the nine goals at the X Games? You know, yeah, I love, I love the challenge of, of the business aspects of it, but I, but I love that it's still fun. I mean, yeah. the stuff that I choose to do is only stuff that I really am passionate about and stuff yeah. that I will enjoy yeah. seeing through. Um, to be honest, the, the the high that that I go for that is, is what's always striving me is is when I land something new when I'm when I'm trying to learn a new trick and I make it for the first time even if it's something someone else has already done for me like that push and that that adrenaline and the um, the confidence 
of thinking I can do this and then finally doing it, you know, seeing it through. And when I landed, that's, that's the buzz. That's the high for me, like of, above all else, above winning a contest. It's about like that one time, just like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. And I'm older now and, and, and now when I get that feeling, it's, it's, I guess, further between when I feel it. And so when I do, it's way more intense. It's like landing your first kickflip. It's, yeah, that's what it feels like every time. You caught a lot of flack for posting a pic uh, with your daughter. <laughs> yeah, I did. And she didn't have a helmet. What's the final word on, on, on that episode? Um, I don't know. I mean, we're still, you know, I still skate with her. I just don't take photos and pu <laughs> publish them anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's something, it was something we did sort of on a whim, which I, I, it's something I do with her in the backyard and I do it, at, you know, at, as safely as possible. Um, I'm not doing anything that I'm gonna put either of us at risk. And if there is any risk, I'm taking the brunt of it. I mean, I have four kids, I've done it with all of them. You know, to be honest, I have done it with her. And she has a helmet and, and I've done it with her when she has a helmet on, but she is up against my body because I'm using I'm the support of everything. And when I do that, I mean, this, this sounds super lame and it wasn't something I was gonna put out there when, when I was in the thick of it, mm -hmm. but her helmet would push down on her nose and on over her eyes no matter what size we got, no matter what. And so she couldn't see and she'd be crying because it's like pushing on her nose and it wasn't an enjoyable experience for anyone. <laughs> and so I stopped doing it with her helmet, that's why. Um, so take that, okay? <laughs> but you that's know what why. I mean? Like when they were, when they were give, like, we want a quote from you, I'm just like, I'm not gonna give you anything to go on. I still, mm -hmm. I stand by it, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm not gonna put my daughter in danger. Yeah. I'm not careless and at she's, all. Um, and this is not some Michael Jackson moment. Yeah. If you want to start a brand now, it would be that much harder to yeah. rise above everything else. It's possible. Yeah. But you're going to have to work that much harder at yeah. it. I'm so glad that like our audience got to hear you say that. What's the dream when you're a kid? That yes. was the dream to come true. Yes. Skate park in your backyard. Yes. All these things that I get to do, are, they're, they're like these bizarre dream come true. You know, it's just like, I, we never imagined that.